Everything it seems had been thought out for every one of us long before we arrived. I hardly, hardly recognised myself in the strange uniform they gave me. Was it not worthwhile to sign a contract for three or even five years in order to return to China and able to split with some authority? And my first enthusiasm must have got to the dangers through which I would pass. Hush now, my love. This life is like red dust on the wind. This first came about from, there was a, a five minute play festival at the Bush Theatre um, and um, Ricky Beadle Blair and John R. Gordon, they run this company called Angelic Tales and they, 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 you know, they asked me like, were you putting a play for that, for this five minute play, you know, and uh, Ricky said to me, I, I want you to write about something, you know, it's really important to you and uh, open on my, my computer at that point was, was, was a, an article in The Guardian about Chinese labourers. So I could, you know, so I wrote this one scene and there were like three characters in it, there were two labourers and and the ghost of one of their wives, and uh, so it's one scene, and one line from that scene is, is in the finished play today, so it all comes from that. And afterwards, people were saying to me, you, "You've got to go and write that," you know. And uh, I thought, right, this, that's a big job, you know. I've, I've got to know, I've got to know about that that story. I've got to know about history. I've got to know about everything around it. And so I, I kind of like didn't write anything for a good six months, a year. I just went away, and I. I, I I researched and, and read and learned a, a lot about about you know about about Chinese history, about World War One, about Chinese theatre. Because because one of the things that came up when I was researching about these labourers, what was extraordinary about them was a lot of them, uh, um, an almost unreal proportion of them were incredibly artistic. There is like. There is, there's this amazing trench art that they still keep now. They, they, they made, they, they did engravings in bombshells on crate, you know. They, 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 they painted their, their quarters with the walls and ceilings with like these elaborate frescoes. They, they carried musical instruments with them. They, they made these little trinkets and sold them to, 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 to supplement their, their income. They, they did performances. They told stories, they sang songs. They were extraordinary, you know, in that sense. And so I wanted to make my, play about the characters I want them to be amateur Chinese theatre performers who go you know they're very poor and so they go they go and work behind the lines and so I had to learn about Chinese Chinese theatre a little bit even though my characters they're, they're most definitely amateurs they're not expert you know they're 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 they're, they're, they're not the, what we see at Sad as well they're not they're not kind of peaking opera maestros you know they're they're, they're just guys who want to make theatre you know that day was a turning point in my life. For one thing, I was no longer my own master. I had nothing to say about the food I ate, the clothes I wore, how I wore them. The place where I slept all the way I wished to sleep or get up. Where I desired to go, how the hour would turn. I did not decide to do how I wanted to do it. It's always talked about you know, the Americans joining in the war at the last minute, and what a difference that made, but you, you, you know, the injection of, you know, a hundred odd thousand, for the British and French that is, fit, hardy, hard working men from China, from northern China, suddenly turning up to dig trenches, to, to, to mend tires, to repair roads, all that kind of stuff, you know, is, is a huge contribution. And it's been, completely forgotten. It's kind of heartbreaking in a way that, that those, those guys came from the other side of the world at a time where, you know, you couldn't just hop on a plane and go somewhere. There was no easy jail or anything. You, know, you couldn't just, you know, leave around the planet or anything. There was no, there was no China Air, you know, there was nothing like that. To, to come to the other side of the planet in the most horrific conflict uh, that mankind has seen. I think it was the first mechanized war to, to be surrounded by all that death and destruction, and a lot of them didn't make it back, unfortunately, a lot of them, a lot of them died. Um, no one knows exact numbers again. And it's, not only were they forgotten, I go as far as to say they were completely erased, they were like airbrushed. Um, there was a, there's a painting, we, we, we feature this a little bit in the play, there's a, there was a, a mural painting, the Pantheon de la Guerre. I don't think it ever got finished, but, but it was supposed to s commemorate all the contributors to the winning war effort and the, the Chinese laborers were 
painted out of the picture. I mean, they, they, they were painted over with American faces because the Americans were deemed more important than the Chinese. Because this was a time of empire. This, and, you know, empire was built on racism, on structural racism, on the idea that the white race was superior to all other races. So a bunch of Chinese laborers who didn't, didn't really, just didn't really register in the imperial British Western conscience. And you have to take into account as well the, 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 the parlous state China was in at the time. It's, I, think, I think people would find it difficult to comprehend now, particularly people under the age of 30, when you look at China, what it is now, what a powerhouse it is, what, what an economic kind of like superpower it is, that at that point in history, it was literally um, on its knees. For one it, thing, I was no longer my own master. There's an abundance of talent and there'll only be more. The more stories we get up there, the more people are inspired. Because the other myth you will often hear is, yeah, you know, Chinese people, East Asian people, they don't want to be actors. It's their culture. Yeah, this, is, this is bunk, you know. You go to Hong Kong, it's full of actors. You go to China, there's lots of actors. You go to Japan, there's lots of actors. Korea, loads of actors. What it is, it's, it's a standard immigrant narrative. You know, they look at the TV, they see what's on there and they go, well, that's no job for you. You know, you can't make a living that. You won't get any respect doing that. We, we, we've definitely developed a kind of pride in ourselves in the last few years and, and I see East Asian actors now, like the ones in this play, I mean, they're just amazing. They, 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 they get up there and you see that they're brash, they're confident, they want, they, they, you know, they want to swagger. And that's all you have to do on a stage, you have to swagger. No one's paying you to be, to be kind of shy and timid. No one's paying you to be insipid and, and, and kind of weakly exotic. No, no, no one's paying to watch you do that. No one cares, no one's interested. Chinese and East Asian people, they've got, you know, there's this idea that we're this kind of earnest and dehumanized kind of no aspirations, no inner life, no hope, you know, we're not, we're not, we, we're kind of devoid of passion, we're devoid of existence in a way. We're just supposed to cook or just supposed to add numbers up, just supposed to do these things, you know. And, and actually we can, we, we, can, we can really, you know, we've got big souls as well and, 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 and good rhythm and yeah I, th I think I, you know the show will be a lot of fun from that point of view.